Hello everyone, this is Coded Steel and welcome to your first tutorial in the advanced series of C programming. Uh, the reason this is called advanced series guys is because it's going to be a lot more fast paced than it was in the original series. I'm not going to explain things like for loops, if loops, else loops. I already expect that you understand what all of those mean. This is going to be more function based. Sorry if I'm talking a little fast, but we got a lot we got to cover in this video because next time I want to actually start coding real projects. First thing we got to discuss is we have a new compiler and I chose the code blocks compiler. A few reasons I chose this compiler for the advanced series. In my opinion, it's got a little bit more error checking. Like it can tell you, like if I start typing print F, it pops up for me, okay? So I don't have to continue to type all of this stuff out or remember function names. If I type something and I see the function that I want to call, it's there for me. So where do we get this compiler at? Well, you can simply Google code blocks or you can go to my channel page and under my about section, I have code blocks. You just click on the link and the link will take you straight to the downloads page for code blocks. If this thing will load. Okay, finally. All right, then you guys just click downloads and it's there and you basically click the download the binary release and it will download it all for you or you can simply Google it, whatever else. The other thing I need to note is for this series, we are going to need the user functions. You guys don't need to have code blocks. You can continue to run the dev C++ compiler if you want, but we probably will come to a point in the series where you're going to need the code blocks compiler because when you start a new project in code blocks, it asks you a bunch of stuff about console applications and whatever else, all this stuff. So. The first thing we need to do, now that you have the compiler downloaded, uh, is you need to go in and you need to start a new project. So I'll show you guys how to do that. We're gonna say new project, and then you would type, or you would hit console application. And basically what that will do is it will set you up similar to this. It's gonna set you up with some stuff in main like return zero. It's not necessary to have the return zero, but you can leave it at the bottom because main is supposed to return zero by default. So that situated all of this other stuff on here, you don't really need to pay attention to it. You guys can see you got MATLAB projects, all this other stuff, microcontroller projects. We're not interested in any of that stuff as of this moment. Win G32 GUI. Okay, so you can create all kinds of graphical user interfaces. We're not interested in any of that stuff yet because we're not that advanced. So we're gonna stick with the standard console application. You guys would click there and it will basically open up a file that looks like this and you go under your task sources and boom, there's your main.c and you open up your main.c and that will take you to this. There might be a few things in this main like return zero or whatever else, you guys can delete that stuff. It's, you don't really need it. All you need is your compiler to look or your air, typing area to look like this. Okay, so now that all of that crap is out of the way, we need to discuss a few functions I want to, I want to discuss this time and then we'll move into further we're going to move into our user function stuff in the next tutorial. First function we need to cover is I want to cover fprintf and fscanf and all of this other stuff. So what is fprintf? It stands for file print format. Okay, so you guys remember printf was print format. You know, basically you could type printf and you could format a variable a way you wanted to format it. Well, fprintf prints to like a notepad file like this it prints to a notepad file so i'm going to show you guys how that works we can print something to a notepad file so the first thing we need to do is type file okay and it even pops it up for you which is beautiful and then we type character and whatever we want to name the file i'm going to name it file uh word okay then now what we need to do is we need to do something we need to take this word that we declared our variable name and set it equal to f open and what are the parameters inside of f open well what we do is we take the file name whatever we're going to name the file which i'm going to name it uh, uh word dot text or something like that i think will suffice we put a comma, we put W plus. What does the W plus stand for? 
W plus means I want to read and write to this file. We're not concerned with the writing part because all we're going to do for the moment is read, or I'm sorry, the read. We're not concerned with the reading part because all we're going to do is write for the moment. So now we're going to do F print F, and we're going to print to the object word, and we're going to print out uh, hello. My name is Billy. And then if we build and we run this, too few. Uh, I think that's the correct syntax. Okay, there we go. It built. But it didn't really do anything, guys. It looks like it just said nothing, basically. So how do we know what it did or what did it do? Well, what we do is I'm going to go into my computer here. And we're going to go under my docs, my documents, all through all this stuff. And test is the name of my project. In here, I have something called Word. If I click on the Word file, hello, my name is Billy. Guys, how did that happen? How did we get that stuff? into this file here well it's f print f f print f did that for us it allowed us to put that info in there so that is something we can use now in the future to put something into a file another thing we can do is called f puts i don't really need to cover this but i'm going to anyway what is F puts? What is the difference between F puts and print F? Well, F puts will do the same thing except for the fact that I goofed with F puts. Because the stuff is reversed. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. word goes over here now it will put it in the file correctly okay so you guys can see f puts will do should do the exact same thing so i'm going to reopen that exact same word file there it is hello my name is billy and just to show you guys that we actually did change stuff i'm going to billy's i'll change it to just a y so you guys can see we actually did make a modification to the file there we go. Hello, my name is Bill Ease. Just so you guys know, you can use F puts and you can use print F. I would stick personally with F print F. It's probably gonna do you much more good anyway, because you can start you can basically choose how you're formatting the thing you're putting into the file. Why did I show you guys this? Because later on we might create a game where we need a save feature for C programming. This is gonna be how we're gonna save something. So we're gonna say if uh, person is at this point and they hit save save these words and then later on we can call that stuff back from a file and read it and see where to continue the game from so this is how we're going to we're going to use this basically as our way to save games uh, we're not going to cover games that save at first we're going to cover games that just load once you play them and then you quit them but later on we might want to go ahead and see where did we leave off at or whatever else or maybe make it to where you can enter in a password and continue at a certain level that stuff we might we might discuss that at a later time but this is what we needed to cover now to get your minds kind of geared of saving games one more thing i want to discuss next time we're going to be creating something called a number guesser you're going to be able to think of a number in your head and the code is going to be able to guess that number now i'll show you guys all that cool stuff next time and that's all I have for you in this tutorial remember this one is going to be more function based if you have not watched my beginning series in C programming I recommend that you do anyways it's all I have for you guys this time and I will see you at the next advanced series tutorial